Nick Snoleto is considered a pioneer in the Philippine IT industry. Starting out in the consumer technology sector, he eventually went on to establish PinoyExchange.com in 1999, the first local standalone online message board with a platform that allowed Filipinos to engage in a variety of online conversations with each other. After a stint with the I Ayala Group and with two other partners, he founded Surpass, a technology company that creates digital products for the mobile consumer. Surpass held one of the most successful IPOs on the Philippine Stock Exchange. Noleto's advice to startups? Don't be afraid to disrupt yourselves. Please welcome the President and CEO of Surpass Incorporated, Nix Noleto. Hi guys. So my talk now will be about my personal journey as an entrepreneur, which is a bit new for me since I'm so used to talking about Surpass and what it does and how we're looking to expand. Yeah, so hopefully you guys will have a lot of takeaways and uh, yeah, maybe we can have the slides up, please. Okay, so I didn't put any video and I think there's a seven minute timer. Okay, so my entrepreneurial story, quick background, I actually come from a very uh, uh, successful family. Both my parents are very successful lawyers, none of whom are entrepreneurs. I don't have grandfathers, uncles, cousins who really are entrepreneurs. So me becoming a tech entrepreneur was a very unusual path. Uh, I was a very poor student. In fact, at one point when I was in high school, I, was, I had a trimester where I had five lines of seven. I was always uh, on the verge or teetering on the edge of uh, failing, but I always managed to, to, to pull through and figure stuff out. But I found some respite being in the table tennis team of both my grade school, high school, and college uh, 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 intra interims teams and school teams. So I found something that I could say I was very good at or I was the best at, uh, even though it's probably not something that's too popular or, or has a widespread following. But when I got to college, I started to realize, hmm, Maybe I should take a different path. Maybe I should become an entrepreneur. Maybe I should become an employer, not an employee. Because I was surrounded by very smart people who I said, you know, corporate life is probably more of the same as school life. And probably these guys are going to outperform me again when I enter the corporate world. I needed to change my own trajectory, my own personal path. So I became an entrepreneur. Third year college, I incorporated my first company. It was called Unitas, or Unity in Latin. And I had everything from a Mr. Donut franchise. I had a cafeteria stall in a, in a, in a high school down south. I had a small PlayStation place where I would rent stuff out. Unfortunately, none of them worked. Uh, so I had seven failed businesses uh, early on when I was in college, from very small to, to small to medium. And then the Asian financial crisis hit, and I graduated March of 1998. So I couldn't get a job. In fact, I walked the entire stretch of Ayala Avenue, and my strategy would be I would go to the top of every building, and I would uh, take the stairs going down and spam every HR department with my CV, hoping I would get a call back. Unfortunately, none of them called. And so I ended up working as a restaurant manager in KFC SM North Branch. In fact, I never made it to manager. I was actually an assistant manager in SM North. And here is where I learned a lot of how businesses run. Um, the point of sale system taught me a lot about how sales can be driven. Um, getting people to come into your store was really marketing. Understanding supply chain came from working with the commissary to make sure you had enough products to sell. Uh, customer service was also there, um, operations, HR, managing a lot of your crew. All of these things I learned by running one branch. And so I'm forever thankful for this experience. In July 1999, I started a website called PinoyExchange.com. I actually licensed a software called Ultimate Bulletin Board. 
uh, I can't program a single line of code. So I actually had to license off-the-shelf software, created Pin Exchange, but then I said, how do I generate traction for it when I don't have money to spend on advertising? The insight came to me when I said, you know, the, the UAP games are very popular. Maybe I can have uh, someone announce during halftime the fact that uh, people could continue to talk about the game on my website. So the game lives beyond the confines of a single live event. And because of that, Pinoy Exchange became the largest online community in the Philippines within three months without us spending a single peso in advertising. Pinoy Exchange ended up being acquired by Ay Ayala, and there my world opened. Being part of the Ayala group, I was exposed to all of the tech giants who were coming to the Philippines. At the time, it was Nokia, AOL, Yahoo, all trying to see what businesses can we bring to Southeast Asia. And I was exposed to all of that, and my, my, my world expanded. Then I noticed one interesting statistic. There were 6 million cell phones and 2 million PCs. And I said, you know, there are two drivers of internet access. Cost of access and cost of the device that accesses the internet. At the end of the day, you can't sell toothpaste if people don't have toothbrushes. Coming from a poorer country like the Philippines, where 90% of the population has a difficult time affording a PC or a laptop, I said the future of the internet was mobile. And with two partners, we started Surpass. This was our first office. Uh, we started a business with 62,500 pesos, and this is what it bought. My dad, being a lawyer, <clears throat> had a small 40 square meter space where he would write his law books. We didn't really have money to, to buy furniture, so we reused whatever furniture he had. We didn't have money to buy computers, so we brought our computers from home. And we uh, didn't even have money to buy lunch money, so we'd always take baon or packed lunches during lunchtime, so we would save every penny. And we didn't have money to pay ourselves either. But over the years, we built the first mobile games. We were doing social media applications early on. We were doing image applications for the phone before the time of Instagram. And we were allowing subscribers to store their messages and their content on the internet before Dropbox. So the categories that we're in, games, stickers, and all of that, these are not new categories. We essentially make them available for the base of the pyramid emerging market customer. So we combine many different ingredients to make it accessible to a much broader base. And we have a very iterative approach to product de development. From our idea, we prototype it, and then we test it. Depending on the data that we receive, the metrics that we get, we, we decide do we double down or do we kill it. So this iterative process of product development allowed us to save or minimize our losses and at the same time maximize our, our successes. In December 2 of 2014, we became the first consumer tech company to list in the Philippines. And apparently there are no other consumer tech companies listed in other stock exchanges in Southeast Asia. There's none in Singapore, there's none in Thailand, there's none in Indonesia, and several other markets. So, you know, we never raised venture capital money until the IPO, and we never borrowed a single peso until today. So I've never even seen what a bank loan form looks like. And we've made a number of acquisitions and investments since we've started to accelerate our growth. So this is really quite the dream for us. And we're looking to expand to several other markets, and now we're in Indonesia. So really, I guess my story is, you know, I'm a below average student. I used to work at KFC. I can't program a single line of code, and I never raised venture capital money or a loan. And that just proves that what I've created with my partner shows that you know, nothing truly is impossible. So take away for all you guys, you know, one day your life will flash before your eyes. Always make sure it's worth watching. Thank you.